Hello and welcome to this video cast of the Aberdeenshire Health and Social Care Partnership Roadshows. Um, this roadshow was filmed in West Hill towards the end of May and is one of a series of roadshows we've done throughout Aberdeenshire during this month. I hope you enjoy it and thank you very much for watching. Good afternoon everyone. Um, thank you very much for coming indeed. M my name's Adam Caldwells. I'm the Chief Officer for the Aberdeenshire Health and Social Care Partnership. It would be great just to know who's here, so that we all know who's here. So, uh, have we anyone from the council here? Who's from the council? So, hands up. And just sort of shout out what you do, so as we know, so everyone knows what you're doing. Business services for housing and social work. Service improvement for housing and social work. Employability services housing and social work. So, part of criminal justice, part of the criminal justice team. Fantastic. SDFs, right at the heart of what we're doing now. Hi. Anyone else? Uh, right. And, uh, workforce development. Workforce development, yes. Good, good, good to have you here. And a bit more criminal justice, I think, as well on the table. Yeah, it's great. It's good, good to have you all here. Um, and third sector? Yes. We've got Alan. <laughs> Well, I'm your gateway to the third sector because I'm part of now what is called the third sector interface. So if any of you are looking to work more closely or more aligned with the third sector or just simply to find out what it can offer, um, I'm your man. So come and have a chat. That's great. Thanks, Alan. Alan, Alan Young. I'll give out cards later, but I'm going to give out Alan Young. Alan Young. That's great. And NHS, we have a few NHS people here. Again, just sort of shout out what you, what you do. Health protection, great to have you here. District nurse. District nursing. Out of hours community out, nursing. Out of hours community nursing, great. From the city here to find out what's going on elsewhere. And you're very welcome, <laughs> very welcome indeed. <laughs> um, uh, community health care assistance, but I work for the council as well. Great, great, tremendous. Great to have you here. Who else have we got here? E-health, communications. E-health, going to be key in what we do. Spaces rehab service we do. Yeah, great, good to have you here, Jason. Who else have we got? Oh, discharge coordinator, the, the future of getting people out of hospital quickly. Good to have you here, Denise. I've got two hats. Good. I'm a medical section, college department. Excellent, lovely to have you here. practice manager at Skin Medical Break. Good, great to have you here. Charge of tobacco. Tobacco control, yeah. Tobacco control, good to have you here. Good to have you here, Derek. Human resources. HR, yeah, and, and we've got HR reps here and we've got some trade union representation here. So again, thanks to, to both our trade unions and, and HR who've been very supportive of, of these events over the last month. So, right, anyone, have we missed anyone? Oh, sorry, children's services, sorry, sorry. Child health. Child health. Okay, good, good, great to have you here, great to have you here. Thanks very much. Okay, so have we got any tweeters here? Anybody that tweets? Right, so get, get on, Jason, in fact, one of our Lolo, Lolo, loyal followers already, one of the only few, so if you, if you tweet, please get on, get tweeting, get, get joining in, be good to have more people than just me having tweeted, uh, feeling awful lonely. So, okay, right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to speak for about 25 minutes probably, and then we'll do some stuff on the table, so it'll be a bit of active learning for everyone, a bit of getting involved rather than just listening. And then we've got an opportunity for some questions and answers. And then literally just a couple of minutes at the end just to wind up the session. Uh, we will be finished um, just a, a, probably a couple of minutes after 3 o'clock. So if you've got any plans, hopefully we'll get finished um, in order for you to get away on time. So th th the first thing to think about is really what, what we're doing. So as we come together from the council, from the NHS and from the third sector together, we're really developing a new organisation. We're coming together to develop this partnership with people pulled from lots and lots of places. One of the things that's really important is, as we work together in a partnership, that we're all trying to do the same thing, that we're all heading in the same direction, we're shooting at the same target, and we, we're all clear what that is. One of the things that can help us do that is a vision. This vision here on the board has been developed by a group of people who work in what's called um, the Pathways Group, and that involves a number of people from the Council, from the NHS, some third sector representation, 
there's been a sm small amount of public involvement and we've had some trade union input as well. So a pretty rounded group of people have been working away at this and a number of other things that I'll tell you about a little bit later on. So the Pathways Group have come up with a vision um, and I just want to point out a couple of things on the vision. So the first thing is this idea that we work from someone's abilities. We work from what people can already do. So traditionally, we've had lots of, I guess what you'd call a deficit model, haven't we? Where we work with all the things that people can't do, all the things that are difficult and challenging. More recently, lots and lots of professions have got to this idea of working with what people can do and how do we build on that to enable people to, to, to achieve the most they can achieve. In big scale, public health have very much been speaking about an asset-based approach, and that's exactly what this is. How do we build on what people can do already? So that's the first thing, as a vision, we want to do together. We want to work from people's strengths. Okay, the second line, there's a, a, a kind of statement about high quality. For me, that needs no further explanation. I think we all want to be part of something that's high quality. On the next line, we've got something about person-centred care. And for me, this is, this is absolutely at the heart of what I want us to stand for as a partnership. And I think this is, at the moment, one of our real challenges. So today, everyone here, all of us as practitioners, want to be person-centred. So let's make it really personal. Mrs Smith, she lives about five doors down on the left the upstairs flat just above the shop. Yeah, Mrs. Smith, real person. So we all want to help Mrs. Smith. We want to be, have Mrs. Smith at the centre of what we do. But at the moment, Mrs. Smith's quite, quite, quite a difficult, quite challenging. She's quite poorly, quite frail, needs lots of help and support. And as a consequence of that, you work with her. You do, you do, you do, you do, you do, you do. Lots and lots of us work with Mrs. Smith. But the challenge is, you've got a different boss than you and you've got a different boss and you've got a different boss and you've all got different budgets and some of you work for different organisations and before you know it we don't actually have Mrs Smith at the middle of what we're doing. We as professionals are having to navigate our way through all these other difficult things and Mrs Smith isn't the person at the middle of what we're able to do every day. We've got that clumsiness of our organisations around us. The other thing we tend to do, so again working in great big organisations, is we do lots of stuff to Mrs Smith, not with Mrs Smith. And we need to get that right. So as a partnership, right at the very heart of what we do, the single thing that I think is most important is we get Mrs Smith at the very centre of what we do every single time. The next bit of the vision is around uh, independence and wellbeing. And we, we, we're pretty good at that. We've been doing lots of that for a number of years. And we need to keep building on that, keep working on that, and working with Mrs Smith to ensure we can do as well as we can around supporting her to be as independent as she can be. But again, it's really important, so it's right up there in our vision as one of the things we want to achieve together. And the last thing is about keeping people in their own communities. So in, in a minute, I'm going to speak a little bit about empowerment and empowering communities and if we believe in that and we believe communities can do something really strong then it's really important we keep Mrs Smith with her community and we don't divorce her away so that she loses all that strength that she can get from being within her community. Okay so as a vision does that kind of look sensible? Yeah no? The nod, shakes, yeah, it's kind of stuff we, we think's about, right? So I like to think of the vision really as just our first hook. It's the first hook that together we can hang what we do on it. It's that nice little hook to get us all heading in the same direction. So uh, wh why, why are we changing? What is it we're doing in developing the partnership? What are we trying to do? So the first thing that I think we're trying to do is answer that challenge I just put to us around person-centred care. If we develop the partnership well and we're in it absolutely together, 
then the first thing we do is we can get Mrs. Smith at the middle of what we do. Because we've got the same vision, we're part of the same team, we're going to have the same budget, we're going to have the same boss, and suddenly all those things that are very difficult for us as practitioners come together and we can make our system, our partnership, really Mrs. Smith focused. She can be right at the heart of what we do. I think that's a good reason to do a partnership and that's just a reason for us locally. If we step back a little bit, take one step back and wonder what the government are after, then I'll just describe that. So, a few years ago, the government asked a guy called Campbell Christie to do a review of public sector provision a around health and social care, the stuff that we do. How do we have a sustainable public sector going into the future? So Christie started off saying, he, he described a few of the challenges that we have. So the first one he spoke about was the demographic change. So again, something that we, uh, we all know about this. We're going to have less and less people of working age. We're going to have more and more people who are reaching a, a more elderly age. Okay? So we all know about that. Thinking about our asset-based approach, so let's, let's walk the talk. We've got a tremendous asset there, haven't we? We've got lots of people who are still really fit and active, are contributing. So think, 65, last person that retired from one of your teams, 65. Incredibly young these days, isn't it? You've still got almost 25 years on average to live in Aberdeenshire from when you retire. Go back 25 years and you had a couple of years on average to live. We've had this massive change. It's really fantastic. It's a really positive thing. 85% of over 65s in Aberdeenshire volunteer. They might only do one thing a year, shake a tin once a year. 85%. So we've got an incredibly civic society. We've got people who want to join in. So we've got a real asset. However, as you get to the very end point of your life, people tend to get a little bit more dependent, lose a bit of their independence, need a little bit more help, a little bit more support. So what Christie said was if we keep doing our model for supporting that last bit, as we do it today, the system will fall over. He was absolutely clear. We cannot keep doing it the way we're doing it. The little easy thing to hang on to in about 10 years' time, if we keep doing it as we're doing it today, we will have to employ eight out of every 10 school leavers to work in health and social care. It's clearly unachievable. It's clearly unachievable. Okay, so that's the number one thing. Christie said, the worlds are changing. The world is changing. Second thing he said was about, uh, it's just very realistic. We, we have a resource-constrained system. So we're only prepared to have so much tax and stuff, and we've got less people earning money, so less tax. So we have a resource-constrained system. We've got our 10 units of money to spend, no more 10 units of money. So how do we figure out what we're going to do with our resource, along with Mrs. Smith and, and, and the public? Okay. The next thing Christie said as a real challenge was he said, really harsh word, really, really harsh. We have failed, failed, that was his word, failed to address the need of the most vulnerable people in our system. And what he was talking about was this idea of an inequalities gap. So again, stuff we all know about. And as practitioners, you'll all see it. Grandma and Grandad Smith didn't do great. Their kids, middle age now, aren't doing so well. And really, really worryingly, their, their young kids are just repeating that same cycle of not doing nearly as well as we'd want them to as a society. So Christy said, he said out a few more challenges, but that's probably enough for now. So he said, as a public sector, to so have a future as a public sector and health and social care, there are a few things we must do. Okay, so the first thing he said was, we need to think about empowering people. How do we empower people? So how do we give back to Mrs. Smith her, her ability to do what she can do for herself. And when we get lots of Mrs. Smiths together, how do we empower whole communities to be able to behave differently than they do today? How do we empower communities to mobilise and achieve things that at the moment they don't? 
So first thing was around empowerment, both of individuals and communities. And that gives us a real challenge here. So for me, how do we li listen to that and think about how we empower ourselves as a workforce working with Mrs. Smith? How do we empower our partnership to be able to behave and work differently than we do now? Okay, so empowerment. The next thing Chrissy spoke about was prevention. He said we need to prevent two types of things. We need to prevent the great big public health stuff. So how do we stop people as they get older being, uh, um, having poor health at all? So how do we try and help people to have ageing in the most healthy way they can? And that's around all the sort of stuff we know, t tobacco, drinking, exercise, diet, all those, giving people jobs, making sure people are employed and things. So that basic stuff around prevention of poor health. And then there's a little acute prevention thing. So with Mrs. Smith, how do we make sure when she gets suddenly poorly, she doesn't end up in ARI, but we work with Mrs. Smith where, wherever possible to try and prevent some of those acute episodes and those things that end up in admissions and things that we know aren't as good as they might be if we could manage it differently. So a bit around prevention. He then spoke a little bit about outcomes, and he said we need to really think about how we become outcome focused. So when we work with Mrs. Smith, how do we concentrate on what Mrs. Smith's going to achieve, what's the outcome she's going to get to, and how do we work with her to support her achieving that? And that's what we need to think about, the outcomes that we're going to achieve. And obviously as you roll that up, how do we achieve outcomes as a whole partnership? He then spoke a little bit about overlap. So he said, you know, lots of us working in different bits of the public sector have um, accidental overlaps of what we do. And he said, we really just need to organise that a little bit better, get in around that and make sure we organise ourselves as well as we can. And that was part of this idea of coming together and working as one entity. So that was part of that request. OK, so what Christie did was he said, public sector, you've got this enormous change to do. To have a sustainable future, we need to fundamentally change our approach and what we do. That was really the challenge he set to us. And then he fi the final thing he said was organisations, organisations resist change. So he set us up for a big change, and then he said, but I'm smart, I'm a smart guy. And organisations resist change. Who, who's in an organisation? Who is an organisation? He, he was really kind to say organisations because he meant us. We are our organisations. So how do we think about what change we need to do and how are we part of the positive change that's going to give us a sustainable public sector future? Okay. So that's a bit of the drivers for change from Christie. The government had asked him to do the report and they listened to it as well. So the government have now passed an act, they, there's now a law that's asking, a law doesn't ask, does it? A law telling health boards, so NHS Grampian for us locally and Aberdeenshire Council for us here, to come together to develop a partnership that starts to address some of the issues of Christie. That's part of the government solution. So from my perspective, that's pretty helpful. It gives us a few rules that just help shove us along in the right direction. Okay, so that's some of the drivers we've got for change. So th this slide is really about that last point of Christie. H how do we, as an organisation, as a partnership, how do we come together and make sure we're part of a positive change? We're part of driving the way we need to go. So a number of things. So the first thing is a commitment that I will give to all of you to absolutely everyone here. As the Chief Officer for Aberdeenshire Partnership, I will create an environment that empowers you to do your job differently than you're able to do it today. That is the single biggest measure I will work to as to whether I've done this job any good or not. If I do it well, you will be very empowered, you will be able to work within the partnership, 
in an empowered manner. That is my, cha that is my challenge. That only works if you all join in with that and then work in that empowered way. Okay, so that, that I think is our way to go. That's really, really difficult. I, I, I don't underestimate that at all. We, we've all come from, I don't know, in the room we've got about 10 different professions just here today. So you've all been trained differently. We're working in several different organisations in lots of different departments and we've all got slightly different cultures. We've had lo long-standing ways that we do things and that's part of what we need to change. So I don't underestimate how incredibly difficult that is for every single one of us to figure out how we're part of that in a positive way. So we've got a few things to help us. We've got the vision. So again, thinking big, where are we all trying to get to? We've got the vision, that's our first hook. So if we can all be part of that, all sign up to that, that's the first thing to help us. The next thing we've got are things like principles and philosophy. So the Pathways Group, the same guys that did the vision, have worked on a series of principles about how we can work together and a philosophy that will guide our approach as a partnership. Okay, so they'll all help us. L let me just ask a question now, if I could. It, it, does anyone here this morning, um, was everyone working this morning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did anyone sit around and think they didn't have enough work to do this morning? That they, they kind of wished they had a few more clients or patients or, no? Anyone? No? No, I don't think so. The system's really, really red hot, isn't it? People are running to stand still. The public sector's been squeezed and squeezed and squeezed over the last five years. So we're all working absolutely flat out. Absolutely flat out. And I know that for all of you looking at me going, that vision stuff, I can't even see the patients or the clients I've got to see. What's he on about? But that is our challenge we've got. And that is the bit where I want you to really work with me and have a bit of faith. We need to figure out how we get off the treadmill. We work together to deliver that vision of Christie and then our vision locally. How do we figure out working together how we actually have a sustainable public sector that feels right to work in? So we work really hard, but we're not sprinting at flat out speed all the time. But we're working at the right rate. How do we work with Mrs. Smith so that she's at the middle of what we're doing? We've empowered her to do stuff differently. We've empowered her community to do stuff differently. And we've got a public sector that's going to work and be sustainable as we go forward. That's our challenge. If we merely move a few deck chairs around and join a few things up, but which would be helpful, be good for Mrs. Smith, but we would miss our chance. We would miss what really is being asked of us to do that fundamental change. That is absolutely what I believe we've got to do. And doing it together, so it's really helpful, in one partnership, we can work out with Mrs Smith and the public what we will do together and what we're going to empower other people to do themselves. Okay? So that's our challenge. So Christy spoke a little bit about outcomes. And... The government have published 10 outcomes. They're, they're in a draft format, but I'm pretty sure they're not going to change very much. So there's kind of 10 outcomes ahead of us that we're expected to do and work to from the government for a national level. So in terms of these, I've, I've not just recorded them because that would be really, really, really tricky to read and go right through in, in a public session. So I've just tried to catch the spirit of them and, and just give you a feel for what the outcomes are that we're going to have to work to. So the first one is you know, people being supported, living as independently as they can, feeling safe, feeling supported. I, I hope that looks really like our vision. I hope that rings a lot of bells with the vision and what we were thinking about in terms of what we want to do as a partnership. Christy was critical about our, our approach to, to inequalities, so that's a, a, a natural response from the government. Um, on our day-to-day -day work, we're going to all have to think about how we're part of addressing the inequalities gap. E even in Aberdeenshire, where you know, we have relative, uh, very wealthy communities, you know, we, we're in a, a very rich area, we've got very, very low unemployment, all, all those sort of really useful, helpful things, 
we still have pockets of deprivation. Be it some of our more rural areas have sort of rural deprivation, and some of our bigger towns, you know, so Fraser, Broad, Peterhead, Inverary, have pockets of, of, of deprivation and therefore inequalities as well. Okay, so we need to figure out how we're going to do that. We need to treat people with respect. So that's obviously Mrs. Smith. When we work with Mrs. Smith, we need to have um, an, a, a, an approach that's full of respect. But really crucially as well, we, we need to treat each other with respect. So again, thinking about that challenge we've got, that we've got different professions, different groups, different cultures. How do we, as we come together in a team, have respect for everyone's role in that team? How do we do that in a way that we do every single day? How do we make the partnership a great place to work? That, that's us. How do, how do we do that? So I, I, I have a real hope that there's two things you'd say if you were asked. So you d let's say you're down the pub with your mate, having a beer, and your mate says, well, what's it like working for that partnership? I hope you'd say, firstly, I'm really proud of what I do. I make a difference every single day. That's the first thing I hope we'd all say. I hope we'd say that today. And the second thing I hope you'd say is, and it's a really good place to work, the partnership, because we feel empowered. So when we've got a challenge with Mrs. Smith, we work together, we all have our tuppence worth, and sometimes we do what I suggest, sometimes we do what my colleagues suggest, but we do that in a really empowered environment. We can sort our own problems out, and we do that with respect for all our different professions and our contributions, and all the other things I've been saying. And when we bring that together, I believe that's a really great place to work. I think the partnership, if we approach it like that, will be a great place to work. And the last thing is, um, something again, something we've been working on for a long time, just this idea of, of how we choose to spend our money. So on one side, we spend money on institutional care, um, in care homes, in hospitals, in, in institutions. Really, really important, a key part of what we do. And at the other end, we spend it with Mrs. Smith in her own home. And we just need to keep checking how, how we balance that up. As I said, we're doing, we're doing okay in Aberdeenshire. We do that okay. But we need to just keep looking at that, checking we've got the balance right. Probably critical, actually, isn't it? So the partnership's going to spend about £300 million a year. So it's a, it's a big organisation. You know, it spends a lot of money. So we just need to keep, keep getting that check just in the right place. So, last slide before I sit down. So, how are we going to be organised? Okay, so a little tiny bit of background. So, last summer, it was uh, really, really obvious that the government were, were going to change our world. They were going to change what we do. So, in Aberdeenshire, we established a bit of infrastructure to help us move from where we were to where we're going to get to in the future. So, the first thing we did was establish the most senior group that need to oversee it. And that was called the Transitional Leadership Group. The Transitional Leadership Group, okay? That involves five elected members from Aberdeenshire Council, so five councillors, five health board members. So, so NHS Grampian has a formal board, so five of their members, and two members from the third sector. So two people that sit on formal committees within Aberdeenshire third sector. Okay, so that's the formal committee overseeing our transitional period. They've got a few advisors on, as you'd expect. There's a sort of chief social work officer, um, a healthcare advisor. So there's a few advisors on that. But that's the formal voting group of the transitional leadership group. They're going to become the formal group that will oversee our business next year. So they're the group that will be accountable for how we, we spend that £300 million of taxpayers' money. Okay, so that's the senior group. They established four streams of work for us, again, thinking, getting from where we were to where we want to be. And, and I'll just quickly run through those so you know what they are. So the first one was a governance group, and that's looking at t two, two bits of governance. So um, a very legal rules sort of thing, checking we're compliant with the law and all that sort of good stuff. And then one that affects all of us much more, this idea of either clinical or professional governance. H how do we work together with Mrs. Smith within a, a, um, a professional governance framework. So there's a bit of work 
um, underway with that. So that's the governance group. There's a group looking at resources, and in, in really, really overly simplistic terms, they're basically establishing how we have a budget that's the right size for our partnership to be able to do all the work that we want to do. There's a people group. So the, the people group's looking at um, a number of things. The first thing is, is about us. It's about our staff. How do we get involved? How do we know about it? How do we feel involved? How do we feel empowered? So all the things I've been talking about, so sort of work we're doing today, so stuff about us. A bit of outward looking um, work, so um, working with the public. So again, thinking back, if we're going to empower the public differently, we, we're clearly going to need to do lots and lots of work around what the public expect, expectation, how they're going to work with us. So there's a bit of work on the public. And then there's also a little bit of work around policy. So um, the, the easiest example I've got is if, if two of us, one from the council, one from the NHS, go in to work with Mrs Smith, at the moment, if we have to lift Mrs Smith and, and, and help her move, we've got two different policies to do that. So we need to just kind of tidy stuff like that up and make sure we're all working to the same policy around things like that. So lots and lots of work to do there uh, over the next period of time. And then the fourth group is this pathways group. So I've mentioned them a few times. So they're the guys that did our, our hook, our vision stuff. Uh, they did the, the principles of how we might work together uh, and a bit around the philosophy. And they've done two other things as well. So they've done a, a little bit of work on pathways of care. And the, the really crucial bit about the pathways of care is how we get um, appropriate, appropriate consistency uh, across this huge place, Aberdeenshire, with this huge amount of money we're spending, a huge variety of specialties and disciplines and, and things that we work with the public with. Okay, so a little bit of consistency, appropriate level of consistency, pathways. Quite a lot more work to do on that. And then the other thing they've done is, is start to think about team. So again, if we think Mrs. Smith right in the middle, what is the team that Mrs. Smith needs around her? What's the team that will work with Mrs. Smith? So they're very close to concluding their their work, they're hoping to conclude it in June and basically what they'll do is they'll give us a framework so we'll have a nice framework that will allow us then as local teams to figure out how we work within that framework. How do we develop our team, how do we work together, how do we use the vision, the principles, the philosophy to work together in a multidisciplinary team. So that is an invitation to absolutely everyone to be part of that, to join in and be part of scoping out and framing up how we work. Okay, so that will be from the autumn. The only absolute given is that we will be multidisciplinary teams, and, and by that, drawn from every organisation and every profession appropriately to, to work with Mrs Smith. That, that's the aim, that's what we're after as a thrust. Okay, so that will start from the autumn. Okay, so that's me for now. I'm now going to introduce Ian Ramsey. Um, Ian's the project manager for integration, and he's going to take us through the next bit. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, within this room, we have a, a really good cross section of the different disciplines that work within the health and social care sector, whether it be working with individuals like Mrs. Smith, or within teams, or within support roles, or management and leadership roles. Now I'd like to tap into some of that knowledge and experience and I've got three questions that I'd like you to consider within your tables. The first thing is, what works really well in West Hill? And if you don't work in West Hill, the area that you work in or the team that you work in. The second thing is, why does it work well? What are the ingredients that make it work well? And the third thing is, what gets in the way of it working better? So whether it be um, location, whether it be um, you know, whatever it is, why doesn't it work better? So if you, if you can consider those three things, um, there's sheets on each of the tables, um, and this works much better if you muddle around a bit. Okay, so try not to sit <laughs> next to colleagues, work within a multidisciplinary table. Okay?
We, we've got, just got a slot here for some questions. If anyone's got any questions, we've um, we, we're developing. It's it's on on the in intranet now. Of both organisations and third sector can um, access it through Arcadia Light through the council system. But for people who are employed by the council, the NHS, just through the intranets at the moment. We, we were just on our table speaking about joint systems. There's a good example of where we've got quite a lot of work to do. So um, it's coming. It's coming. So, uh, so there's some frequently asked questions stuff. We don't get onto your question. We've spoken about Twitter. A thing called Yammer, which is uh, basically an, an interface where, y y like a chat forum sort of thing. So if you kind of figure something out really smart somewhere, you could share that with other people. Or if you're stuck, um, you might say, anyone figured out how to fix this or something. So it's something that hopefully will gain a bit of momentum. There's, there's not really very much on it yet, but as we all uh, progress through this, hopefully that might be a useful resource for, for, for some of us, if it suits your style. Right, so any questions? Anything anyone wants to ask? Thanks. We'll, we'll start back there first, if that's okay. I would just like some more information on the people, the work the people's groups been doing. Yeah. I work partnerships in our culture. There should be a culture change needed for in the Mr. Mrs. Smith as well. Yeah, absolutely. I wonder what kind of work you're doing. Yeah, sure. Okay, I'll, I'll just repeat that in case everyone didn't hear it. So, so that's a question about, um, obviously we, we've been speaking about what we're doing and how we need to change and go forward and, and rise to the Christie Challenge. How do we work with Mr. and Mrs. Smith and what are we doing? I, I think that was the thrust of the question. Um, so the, the Mr., Mr. and Mrs. Smith are working with the public is um, absolutely at the start of that journey. So we've got a really key role in that and we've got um, a, a programme of work it's through the summer, kind of late summer, with the, what's called the Community Planning Partnership. So again, I suspect everyone's fairly familiar with that. But this is the multi-agency group who comprise local authorities, health, um, the police, fire and rescue service, Scottish Enterprise, all those sort of groups that come together in community planning. And community planning have obviously got a big infrastructure to do work with the public. Um, and so we're piggybacking on that through the summer. Um, we've... For want of a better expression, we've bagsied a slot to talk about some of this stuff and, and start the ball rolling there. I think in real terms, it's a, it's a long journey, isn't it? You know, it's, that's a, a, a change of our society, actually. You know, we've got to a certain point. So we need lots of um, other people joining in. You know, our, our Holyrood uh, politicians need to be part of that. Um, you know, our local councillors need to be part of that. So there's a, a big collection of people need to join in with that, that change. But that's our starting point. That's our starting point. Yeah, Derek. Do you know of an area where something like this has been really well done? Yeah. Okay, I'm just thinking of from yeah. time spent in change management before, I think once to yeah. a group of clinicians from the yeah. to Leicester to see what happened there, and all of a sudden yeah. everything changed and their eyes were open, and we did something yeah. else with dermatology and Carlisle um, yeah, sure. ho Hospital. Sure. You know, people couldn't see how some of these System, you know, these massive system changes and you know, discontinuous things were going to happen till they saw it working somewhere. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's been brought up. I bet yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, so somewhere who's done this. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's, a, there's a few good examples um, in England. There's stuff. There's, funny enough, someone came to a session the other day who's just come back from Guernsey, and apparently they did it about five years ago. It was a, a much smaller place, but they, they did it very well. Five years ago, there's there's quite a good body of evidence from someone called Alison Petch, so an academic who's based out of Glasgow, has done quite a lot of writing about this. There's lots of small examples in Scotland. So again, actually in West Hill, I think over the last 12 months, um, lots and lots of people have been telling me about how well it's come on the last 12 months working locally. Um, you know, on the back of some co-location and things coming together and um, managing to change some things with some more work to do, with some more work to do. So there are, there are some good examples. As a whole-scale system, um, I, I don't think there's a whole-scale system that has, has cracked it at all. But interestingly, again, when you read lots of the literature, um, it's often written in the first paragraph that, you know, this is, the, this is the dream ticket that almost every system across the world is looking for, where health and social care work in a completely integrated manner. Can I just yeah. maybe feedback that it might be with all these changes happening, both with workers in health and social work, 
that they actually take time to, to sort it out and so you know there's an artificial start date and then kind of things aren't in place and then if they're not in place and workers know clearly what's being required um, then it doesn't help for the public to understand that if we're yeah. struggling ourselves to understand what's yeah. happening how we're we supposed to make it clear to um, uh, to obviously yeah. um, the, the public yeah, at I and on a personal point of view um, I require anything in large print, so if the system changing everything with anything to do with forms, then that needs to be sorted out before yeah. I'm expected to go and do the job, not, oh, well, don't worry, we'll catch up. Okay, yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you very much. Thanks for that. So, I, I'll just repeat a bit of that in case... I, so, I think there's something about the pace of change, the pace of change and what we're going to do. So, um, in terms of the, the process I've spoken about from the autumn... Um, that's really the start. It's not the start. It's the ca people are doing lots of stuff already. But in formal terms, I think that was the word you used. In formal terms, that's the bit where I, I hope we all see a bit of a step change, and, and it will start to gather a bit of momentum for all of us. Um, and that will last for as long as it needs to last. So that's a really unsatisfactory answer for lots of people. But part of what I get paid to do is to make judgments around when most of us are ready for a change to be converted. So that, that's absolutely what I'm doing. So we've got lots of experts who are going to help us from October. We've got lots of people who are expert in organisational development and change process to work alongside our supervisors and our managers. Um, and we will be doing that together. And there will be a point where, if we think of our normal distribution, all the keen beans, never worried about them. All the people that don't want to come, not worried about them, because whatever you do, they won't come. So the group in the middle, all, all of the normal people. Um, I, so I shouldn't have said that. I, should have <laughs> <laughs> I do apologise. I do apologise. I was thinking of normal distributions, obviously, only. Um, so the vast majority of us in the middle, um, are, are, the vast majority in the middle are the bit we need to make judgments on, and, and we need to, as people move, that's when there's a certain point we will just make a judgment, or I will, where I say that that is now what we're doing, and the ones that are struggling to catch up just need to catch up or get off the bus, um, and the rest of us need to keep pressing on with what's the right thing to do. Alan. Yeah, the point came out around our table about if you're empowering the people who use the services, hand in hand with that goes empowering and valuing the, the, the people and the perspectives they bring of everyone who delivers the services. So it's actually finding out what wisdom, what knowledge you have yeah. in your teams already. And, and if that is quite a culture change. It means going beyond hierarchy. Who's this person to tell me how I might do this job? It's actually trusting people's yeah. knowledge at the front line and actually valuing them and that being the model that you then send out to the people you exist to support. And I think the same is true about the change process, that some people are already modeling different ways of working and mm -hmm. collaborating, mm -hmm. however informally. A lot of people are taking some risks or just quietly getting on with it. Others are more locked into more mechanistic systems. Well, that's not what my job says. And it's just a matter of building on the strengths and taking the process yeah. forward and trying to carry, as you said, as many people yeah. with you as possible and lead by example. Yeah. Zach, thanks, Anna. Good, good point. Good point. Anything else, Lorraine? Just, uh, can you see it's maybe a bit early, briefly, briefly, but how this agenda will actually affect children's services, yeah. both in the and in the yeah, yeah. Uh, re really crucial bit. So um, just check everyone's heard. So question about how children's services fit in with this. So the, the formal partnership is only adult services. Uh, not sure if everyone's aware of that. So it's just adult services. The council are reorganising their portfolios of their directors so that children's services are going to sit alongside um, education. Uh, very sensible. It's been done in lots of councils but you have everything around children working together. Um, what, what we need to carry on with, and we don't, we don't have an answer yet, Lorraine, is how we don't inadvertently break children's services off from lots of our people who work with children and adults. The, the, the great example of this would be, for me, general practice. So general practitioners are very much a, a key part of our partnership. They don't differentiate between children and adults and I think it would be unhelpful for them to have to work with totally different systems. So how do we keep 
what's good about the system as it's evolved and how do we still um, work alongside the legislation and what we're trying to do as a partnership. So, so it's a bit of work in progress, a um, bit of work in progress. But, but um, just I guess the, the really important bit from my perspective is we don't go backwards because I think we've made such good progress over the last uh, number of years to make children's services really integrated within community-based services. And it's to make sure we don't inadvertently um, damage any of that. I don't think you need to damage it, but I think it's important not to forget. Yeah. About uh, absolutely, about absolutely, forget absolutely, about absolutely. We'll come to them yeah. later. Yeah. Jason. Um, I was just want to ask about how the, the three partnerships that exist in Grampian, how, how, what processes are in place to ensure there's a, there's a degree of appropriate synergy to make yeah. sure that whilst they're locally appropriate, we don't have a post sort of situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's a question about um, NHS Grampian covers three local authorities and a question about um, ensuring there's an appropriate level of joined upness between the three local authorities and the health interface. Um, there's a, a, a group s specifically being set up that involves some members of NHS Grampian, so some of the corporate team working with um, the co-chairs of the three leadership groups within it, uh, as supported by people like me. Um, so there is something in place. We'll have to see how well it works. We, we, again, it's, um, I think, something everyone's signed up to do. Uh, it's a requirement in the legislation that um, different authorities who have a, a coterminous with one health board, it, there is part of the responsibility of the legislation to do that. So we've got the first session of that um, next month, I think. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But there's certainly something in place. We'll, we'll see how it works. See how it works. Right, I'm going to stop us there, um, just so those that have to leave can leave on time. Um, if anyone wants to ask anything, I'll, I'll just be here at the end. So do, do come and speak to me or, or email me or anything you want to do. Um, so last bit, last couple of minutes. So first thing, I would ask all of you, if you're prepared to, to go and speak to a couple of your colleagues that couldn't make it today and tell them a little bit about what we've been talking about, particularly about the Mrs. Smith at the middle thing and how we try and achieve that together and a little bit about the empowerment and how... We're going to work differently as we go forward, uh, and, and any of the other things you, you've picked up. Happy to do that? Yeah? Some people? Yeah, great. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, the next bit on here is um, re really just a, a, yeah, and gosh, it's another request of you, really. So here in West Hill, we've got you know, really good progress happening towards partnership. Still stuff to do, but we're absolutely stepping in the right direction. I've made a commitment to create a different environment for us to work in, and that will take a bit of time. And so the request is, if you think what we're doing is the right thing, if you buy into that vision, you buy into having Mrs. Smith at the very heart of what we do, then conjure up every bit of self-resilience you've got, because this will be really, really tough. We will fall over, we'll fall down a pit, we'll get stuck jumping over a hurdle. That will all happen. <coughs> but if you think it's the right thing to do, stand up, dust yourself off and keep going. Because together, if we actually get in this together, we will make a difference for Mrs. Smith. We will make a difference. I'm going to leave you with a, a quote from Barack Obama who was talking about change and some of the challenge of change. And he said this. He said, change will not come if we wait for some other time or some other people. We, we here, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. on that thank you very much for coming and I look forward to working with you